Chains of Domination is finally here, which means a new season of Rated PvP is upon us. And for those of you who are starting your journey as a Ret Paladin, or even just trying to improve upon last season's results and get your first Gladiator or Rank 1 title, this video is for you. As always with new patches, it's important you're aware of exactly how to load out your class with the best everything, including race, talents, covenants, soulbinds, conduits, gear, and even macros. So sit back, relax, and enjoy as we take you through all the Ret Paladin information you need for PvP in patch 9.1. And if you're looking for a one-stop shop to absolutely crush your opponents in this new season, look no further than Skillcat. Over on our site, you'll find guides that perfectly follow up this entry-level guide, including our world-class courses that walk you through everything you need to know to bring your Ret Paladin gameplay up to the level of a pro. There, you'll find videos on how to deal damage, how to set up kills and win games, and exactly how to execute your spec's playstyle to a standard that only the world's best players understand. In addition, weekly releases of Arena Common allow you to keep up with the ever-evolving meta and learn how to take down some of the most difficult matchups. And if that wasn't enough, Skillcapped members get exclusive premium access to our Discord server where you can question our team of pros with anything you need to know, all from as little as $4.99 a month. As always with your character's loadout, it begins on the starting screen with the most optimal race. Starting with the Alliance, you've got two competitive options in Human and both Dwarf variants. First, we've got Humans, who give you access to the Racial Will to Survive, a 3-minute cooldown stun removal. By pairing this up with a Gladiator's Medallion, you're effectively able to get yourself out of stuns every 90 seconds, giving you the ability to rotate defensive cooldowns better than other races. Dwarves and Dark Iron Dwarves, on the other hand, come with Stone Form or Fire Blood, respectively, which allow you to remove all debuffs on a 2 minute cooldown, although it does put your PvP trinket on a 30 second CD when used. Now, while the Human Racial is a lot more versatile and is likely to help in a whole host of matchups, the Dwarves Racial is a little more niche and isn't as useful in as many matchups. With that being said, the strength of Ferals and Assassination Rogues in 9.1, in addition to the spell Mind Games continuing to exist, means that it's entirely possible the Dwarf Racial will be a strong contender as the better choice. Either way, both races come with very competitive perks, but we have to give it to Human as being the more optimal of the two, simply because it comes with plenty more use cases. Moving on to the Horde, although three races can be Paladins, Torin is by far the best choice. Not only do you get slightly more stamina, which can occasionally be the difference between surviving, but you also get War Stomp, which is an incredible tool for winning games. This all comes down to how potent a Ret's Burst is, which means you value even the smallest control of your opponents. We cannot stress the number of games that were won in Season 1 of Shadowlands by pro Rets just because of a follow-up War Stomp on a target that was coming out of a stun, or from an unsuspecting War Stomp at any point in the game, which unlike Hammer of Justice, cannot be dispelled, giving you an opportunity to randomly use offensive cooldowns on a DPS that you stun at any point in the game. So without question, Torin is the way to go on Horde. Overall, between the two factions, while Human is definitely a super strong defensive choice for outlasting opponents in longer, drawn-out matchups where you can more frequently break yourself out of stuns to rotate cooldowns like Blessing of Sanctuary, the fast pace of the game really makes a tool like War Stomp stand out given that it can single-handedly win you games. Next up, we're going to cover what talents you should be using, and this will differ slightly to 9.1 due to a handful of changes. First up, the level 15 and 25 row remains the same as the synergy between Zeal and Blade of Justice is just too good to pass up. Without going into too much detail, Zeal essentially gives you more auto attacks, which in turn will give you more Art of War procs. Blade of Wrath then doubles the rate at which Art of War procs, making this combination of talents your best choice. Moving down into the level 30 row, Fist of Justice will be selected in almost every PvP scenario for more frequent access to your stun, which is a vital part of how you set up kills as a Ret Paladin. The only exception to this comes with the more gimmicky choice of using Blinding Light. When using this spell, it doesn't actually break on holy damage, so you can abuse this by putting a target into a Blinding Light and then hitting them with Divine Toll, Final Reckoning, and Final Verdict. When performing this sequence, you will need to do it from range to prevent your auto attack triggering and breaking the blinding light. Next up, we've got our first row where all three options are viable and will need to be changed around based on matchup. Your standard pick will usually be Unbreakable Spirit as you're likely to get value out of it in almost every matchup thanks to the cooldown reduction it gives to both your Divine Shield and Shield of Vengeance. There will of course be times where the cooldown reduction of these defensives will not provide as much value as Eye for an Eye, especially when facing Feral Druids or any other class that primarily deals physical damage. It will be up to you to decide if you prefer the CD reduction on Divine Shield or an additional 
additional defensive cooldown to rotate through. And last up, the more aggressive pick of the two is Cavalier, which you may find to be necessary in some matchups, especially in twos against classes that you're struggling to connect against. The level 40 row is a very clear winner in Seraphim, which plays a massive role in your ability to set up devastating burst sequences. Now, you may occasionally find yourself in matchups where Divine Purpose can provide a ton of value, although this won't happen too often and is more of a tournament level play that pro rets will consider when dealing with long dampening matchups against casters. Next, we've got a row that started the expansion defining why Rhett was such a strong spec, as healing hands allowed Rhett's to essentially top anyone with a single word of glory. Multiple nerfs though, including another one in 9.1, has significantly reduced the potency of this talent. It's for this reason that Selfless Healer is looking to be the optimal choice in this row now. With this, you're able to frequently get a powerful instant cast flash of light, while still retaining access to an unbuffed word of glory when needed. With that being said, in extremely fast paced games, you may still want to use healing hands if you find yourself needing to constantly out heal damage in order to stay in the game. Overall, this tier is definitely not the most straightforward one and will likely be influenced by matchup and personal preference. If you want to keep an eye on this choice, our arena commentaries will be the perfect way to keep up with our pro rest decision making here. Just know that a handful of top rets are currently leaning towards selfless healer in most matchups. Last up in the final row, we again have a talent that previously was a big part of what made Rhett Paladin so dangerous to play against. Much like Healing Hands, Final Reckoning has also seen a handful of nerfs, including another one in this most recent patch. Due to this, plenty of pro rats have started to use Sanctified Wrath more often, especially in threes. This was something that was already happening in Season 1 of Shadowlands, with the likes of Vanguards, Kara, and Mystic all utilizing Sanctified Wrath in many of their high-rated and tournament level threes games. With that being said though, both talents remain very viable picks and do mostly come down to personal preference, with either choice being great in almost every matchup. To define the talents, Final Reckoning can make your final verdict hit for crazy amounts while also dealing huge cleave damage itself and does so especially well when paired with a war stomp that hits multiple targets. As for Sanctified Wrath, it will provide a more consistent feel to your burst as you'll immediately be getting your hard-hitting final verdicts out after using Divine Toll, while also dealing consistent cleave damage and extending the duration of your Avenging Wrath. So choose what you prefer, just know plenty of top rats are currently leaning towards Sanctified Wrath. Altogether, this leaves your default build looking like this, with the option to move things around based on what's been discussed so far. Now, moving into the PvP talents, Patch 9.1 has seen a rework to several talents that were previously unused or too strong. We'll start by just providing you with a standard build that you can expect to take to most matchups. On screen now, you can see Lawbringer, Aura of Reckoning, and Blessing of Sanctuary. These three PvP talents together make up your most frequently used build from the majority of high-rated threes games. First, we have the newly designed Lawbringer, which no longer increases your single target damage, but instead makes your cleave damage significantly more potent. By maintaining Lawbringer on targets that you're not focusing your damage into, you'll notice how strong this talent is for cleaving, as it will often be one of your highest sources of damage after a threes game. Aura of Reckoning has also become a stable of the Red Paladin toolkit in Shadowlands, and despite its most recent nerf to not stack as quickly when inflicted by crits, this PvP talent still remains a vital part of your ability to threaten the opposing team and force cooldowns given how strong Avenging Wrath is. And last up, Blessing of Sanctuary is a no-brainer for most matchups, especially in such a fast-paced meta where a small amount of crowd control and your teammates can snowball into a loss. Now, despite these three talents making up your default build, there's a handful of other PvP talents that will outshine your standard build in specific matchups. First, we have Unbound Freedom, which provides you and your most common partners, an arms warrior, with some much needed freedom to connect onto your enemies that will attempt to kite you. While it isn't super mandatory, playing with Unbound Freedom will make your gameplay a lot more fluid and makes it much harder for opponents to deal with you, so definitely consider in matchups where you feel you're struggling to connect, ideally over Blessing of Sanctuary so that you can hold on to both of your offensive PvP talents. Next, we have the brand new PvP talent, Judgments of the Pure. On the surface, this one seems incredibly powerful, however, in practice, it's not as strong as you might think. While it can be used to dispel crowd control such as Freezing Trap and Polymorph, it unfortunately dispels one random debuff, meaning that if a mage has Ignite ticking or a hunter covers their trap with Hunter's Mark, you cannot guarantee that you'll dispel the crowd control. The only exception to this is when using Divine Toll with the Ringing Clarity conduit, as you can throw out several judgments, which almost guarantees you'll dispel the crowd control. It may also pair well with the new upcoming Kyrian Legendary that we'll discuss later, which could make this talent a lot more reliable. 
In addition to dispelling crowd control, it can also have its place at slowing down damage from classes that rely on debuffs. But given that Affliction Warlocks, Shadow Priests, and now even Elemental Shamans all have some form of dispel protection, it's also not necessarily the best decision there either. With all of that being said, this one will definitely take some time to get used to and will be very matchup specific, so again, we recommend checking out our commentaries as the season progresses to fully understand when you should be picking this talent up. Moving on, the next set of PvP talents will be used much less frequently in threes, but definitely have their place in some matchups. Starting with Vengeance Aura, which has been redesigned to no longer stack four times and increase damage. Instead, it just stacks twice and only increases crit. Still though, for those of you looking for a little extra zest in your damage, this one can definitely play its part in executing deadly kill windows. Luminescence plays a similar role in being able to increase the damage of your team, but will certainly be more of a niche pick and will only be taken over other utility if you want a more aggressive approach to your gameplay. And the last PvP talent worth covering is Law and Order. This one is by far the most niche pick and is hard to warrant ever taking over your other options. However, in the rare case that you do find yourself in a matchup where you desperately need more slow to keep up with the enemy team, feel free to pick this one up. An example of this might be when playing with a Shadow Priest, Destro Warlock, or Fire Mage. Alright, before we move on, let's just provide you with a handful of builds you might want to consider using. Again, we have that standard build of Lawbringer, Aura of Reckoning, and Blessing of Sanctuary, which can be used in plenty of matchups while playing a comp like Ret Warrior Shaman. You can then drop Sank for either Unbound Freedom or Judgments of the Pure, depending on the matchup and what sort of utility you need. You can, of course, go with a more defensive build that contains multiple utility talents. Something like Blessing of Sanctuary, Unbound Freedom, and Judgments of the Pure could work really well into comps that heavily rely on CCing your healer, for example, Jungle or RMP. Next, a more aggressive build that focuses on high overall damage would look like this. With Lawbringer and Aura of Reckoning both being selected alongside either Luminescence or Vengeance Aura, depending on your preference, we would recommend going with Luminescence though. And if you prefer to maximize your single target burst potential, you will want to go with both Vengeance Aura and Luminescence along with Aura of Reckoning as Lawbringer is only relevant for increasing your cleave damage. Now, these are of course just a handful of recommendations and you're free to mix and match as you see fit based on the matchup. As we're very early in the season, it's difficult to provide a definitive answer on what talent should be used when, so you'll want to experiment. And again, be sure to check out our commentaries as they're released throughout the season to see what PvP talents our pro rets are using in different matchups. Alright guys, with both your talents and PvP talents out of the way, it's time to move on to Covenants. This one is quite simple, as Kyrian has proven over the course of the expansion to be by far the best overall pick for Ret Paladins. The strength of Divine Toll in conjunction with some of your Soulbind perks and conduits is certainly a force to be reckoned with and has been a very controversial topic since day one of Shadowlands simply due to the strength of it. As for your Soulbinds, despite having three options, Pelagos has been and remains the best choice thanks to Combat Meditation, which is now being joined by a selection of new 9.1 Soulbind abilities that make Pelagos even better. Newfound Resolve acts as a very straightforward damage boost, which will certainly be a major contributing factor to some insane burst sequences Rets will be dishing out once Renown 55 has been reached. In addition, the choice between Better Together and Path of the Devoted gives you the option to even further increase your damage with some more mastery or to negate some of the effects of other classes and covenants, including the ever so frustrating Soothing Voice, which allows mages to gain significant control over enemies even after their main CC was over. Moving into the actual build we expect Rets to use, there have been a handful of new conduit additions and adjustments alongside new talent choices that have changed your standard build. When it comes to potency conduits, Ringing Clarity remains the best choice and should always be used, especially as we climb toward the higher 252 item level variant that provides at 72% chance to proc. Templar's Vindication is then another great potency conduit, which will be super reliable at 252 item level, providing you with a 54% chance to increase your Templar's verdict damage. And last up there's Virtuous Command, which again just passively provides some additional damage throughout your DPS rotation. Moving on to your Endurance Conduits, the nerf to Healing Hands has made Shielding Words a weaker choice. In addition, the new Endurance Conduit Condensed Anima Sphere heals for quite a decent amount and fills a similar role. It's for that reason we suggest picking up this new conduit as your primary Endurance once. Of course, Shielding Words is still a decent pick and may have its place in some matchups, so will likely be something you consider swapping to depending on what you're facing. For example, in a super fast-paced matchup, you may decide to still use Healing Hands, in which case you'd pair that decision up with Shielding Words. 
We then also have Divine Call, which continues to increase in strength as its item level increases and further reduces the cooldown of Divine Shield, which has great synergy with the Unbreakable Spirit talent. The only other Endurance Conduit worth looking at is Royal Decree, which can be paired with Reign of Endless Kings, aka the Prot Legendary. As for the Finesse Conduits, Echoing Blessings easily stands out as the best one and is something you'll want to almost have equipped at all times. Light's Barding does have some use cases, especially when paired with Cavalier and Unbound Freedom, although this will be very matchup specific. As for Pure Concentration and Wrench Evil, while both are good and certainly would be nice to have in some matchups, it's difficult to prioritize them over other options. Altogether, this leaves a standard Conduit build and path for Rets in 9.1 looking like this. As you can see, there's plenty of customization available here, and you'll have the opportunity to switch things around based on matchup. We just ultimately believe that your best build will consist of the previously mentioned three potency conduits, along with the new condensed Animosphere Endurance Conduit, and either Shielding Words or Divine Call, leaving you with Echoing Blessings as your only finesse conduits in most matchups. Next, we're going to be covering everything you need to know about how to correctly gear your ret in patch 9.1. First up, let's make sure you understand what your stat priority looks like. Above all else, you want as much resilience as possible. Despite the diminishing returns after 30%, the PvP trinket set bonus to versatility means that you want to stack this stat as much as possible. Not only does it increase the damage you deal and healing you do, but it also provides you with some much needed damage reduction in this high paced meta. Next, we recommend you play with around 10% haste, give or take a few percent. While haste is generally considered your best stat in PvE, this doesn't consider the benefit of more burst damage in a smaller window. Still though, haste does reduce the cooldown of your abilities and make your globals faster, so it's important to not neglect the stat completely. It's for that reason that you can be a little flexible in the amount of haste that you use. Just know that something around 10% is generally a good amount. You're then free to dump the rest of your stats into mastery, as this is where your burst will come from given that it's a direct increase to holy damage. This of course leaves crit as the stat we want the least of. While this may seem counterintuitive given that rets are all about huge bursts and massive crits, you have to consider that a Avenging Wrath already provides you with 20% crit, significantly reducing the value of this stat on your gear. Combine this with the fact that crit is slightly nerfed in PvP, and you end up with crit being your lowest priority stat. Now, how exactly should you be gearing your character? Well, you'll more than likely end up in a full set of Conquest PvP gear, so that will be the focus of this gearing section. In terms of priority, your weapon is definitely a big one, so you'll want to save Conquest points and pick it up as early as possible. But beyond that, don't stress too hard about what pieces you buy and in what order. Instead, let your weekly cash determine which slots get filled in for free, and just work around that with Versa Haste and Versa Mastery pieces from the vendor. And although Conquest Points and the weekly Great Vault reward play a large role in how you gear, if you do happen to raid, you could benefit from the Spires of Broken Hope shoulders that drop from Sylvanas at a higher item level than items from the rest of the raid, matching what the 2100 Conquest gear scales up if obtained on Mythic. These shoulders come with Versa and Haste, along with the Domination Socket, which can be fitted with a Shard of Cure. Now, it does remain to be seen if these shards, which have already been nerfed by 50% in PvP, will be that effective. However, thinking back to resounding protection and impassive visage in BFA, we wouldn't be surprised to see the Shard of Cure become an important part of every player's loadout in PvP during this season. Now moving on to Trinkets, the recent nerf to Gladiator's Emblem definitely brings it closer in strength to a Gladiator's Badge, however the static strength increase on the Emblem and the fact that it increases your Shield of Vengeance Absorb makes it difficult to ever choose a badge over an Emblem. With that being said, Rets are all about burst every 60 seconds, and a badge lines up perfectly with that. It's for that reason, there's definitely room to choose what you prefer here, although the matchup will play a role. If you're a more inexperienced player, we suggest picking up a badge and macroing it into your Divine Toll. However, more experienced players will want to consider picking up an emblem and utilize it well to keep themselves alive through enemy kill attempts. Either way, you'll eventually want to have access to both and swap them around based on matchup. In addition, the introduction of the Unchained Gladiator's Shackles of Malediction, which is a throwback to the Maledict Trinket in BFA, has been proving to have its place in the meta as Season 2 has begun. This one is definitely strong against teams without a decurse, and can even be chained with multiple Maledictions by having several players on your team use it. 
So to summarize, we've got Badge as an offensive option for increasing your burst, Emblem as a defensive one to help you survive, and the Malediction which is a lot more situational and should generally be staggered with others on your team. And as for your PvP trinket, you'll definitely want to use a medallion in almost every scenario. Even as a human, as we mentioned, being able to break out of stuns every 90 seconds is a big part of what makes humans so strong. Besides, the game is much too fast paced to make relentless a viable option right now and adaptation is too easily exploited. The final part of this section is on legendaries. Prior to Season 2 beginning, Rets were primarily rotating between two legendaries, with Final Verdict being the offensive one and Reign of Endless Kings being the defensive. While that will continue to be the case and you definitely want to have both ranked up to max, the new Kyrian Paladin legendary Divine Resonance is looking very strong and will more than likely be your best legendary in some matchups. First, it will allow you to cleave quite heavily with Lawbringer, so in matchups where you value that damage, Divine Resonance will have its place. And second, it will allow you to frequently dispel with Judgments of the Pure, so again, in matchups where that's valued, you'll want to consider using Divine Resonance. We suggest starting off by maxing your Final Verdict Legendary while having both Reign of Endless Kings and Divine Resonance at 235 item level. You can then play around with both and get a feel for which matchups you prefer to switch things around in, and then decide which to rank up next. Last up, we've got macros. This section will just cover any important macros you need as a Ret Paladin. First and foremost, focus macros are vital for interacting with a specific player on the enemy team, no matter who you're targeting. You'll need these for Rebuke, Hammer of Justice, Hand of Hindrance, and even Repentance if you ever decide to play it. Next, as Rets are a hybrid spec, they have plenty of tools for assisting their team by casting spells directly on them. It's super important that you streamline this process by having macros that allow you to instantly use spells on the correct target without having to manually target them or mouse over them. It's for that reason that we suggest making Cast at Party 1 and Cast at Party 2 macros for all of your utility, including Blessing of Sanctuary, Freedom, Protection, Sacrifice, Cleanse Toxins, Flash of Light, and Word of Glory. Alternatively, instead of using Party 1 and Party 2 macros, you can directly input the name of your partners into your macros. We've then got two quality of life macros you might want to use. First, simply macroing your badge with your Divine Toll will streamline your burst sequence and creating a cast at player or at cursor macro for Final Reckoning allows you to cast Final Reckoning without needing to click first. And last up, you can consider using a Cancel Aura macro for Blessing of Protection and Blessing of Freedom if you're playing without Unbound Freedom. This is great to use against mages, although now that Kleptomania has been removed in 9.1, there's a chance that you could just be greedy with these spells and not Cancel Aura them, as they may be unable to quickly spell steal these buffs. Alright guys, that about does it for this one. Remember to head on over to Skillcapped if you're interested in continuing your learning by checking out our world-class Ret Paladin course. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.